Well, howdy ladies and gents, and welcome back to the house that never sleeps. Uh, getting a lot of questions about tools, and uh, tools required to work on your guitar. So, uh, back in the old days, you know, a lot of people didn't have the proper tools to do things with. Well, even these days, I guess, they, they still don't. So, I want to show you some things that you can do to improve your guitar, or fix a few little things here and there without having to spend a fortune on tools. And I'll even show you how to make a few tools that might help you, you know, with neck radius and stuff. But, uh, let me bring the camera on in here closer and I'll show you. i got something in my eye. I'll go work on that first. And then I'll bring the camera in here and I'll show you closer a, a few uh, old ways that uh, old folks used to do to set their instrument up or improve it in some way or another, whatever it needed done. Uh, let me go doctor my eyeball, and then I'll come back and show you that stuff. Check that out. I mean, she's uh, whiting out outside. Lots of whiteouts today. I don't know how well the camera's going to get it, but you can see it's really peppering it down out there. I think I'm going to stay in the house that never sleeps today. <laughs> so let's say that you want to check your string action, okay? You don't have any tools, you don't have any uh, measuring guides or any anything like that. And you want to get your action down, you know, where it's pretty comfortable to play. Well, I've heard Dave talk about this a lot too, and I've seen people do it. Back in the old days when they didn't have the, the proper tools, and even today, just take a quarter and at the 12th fret, stick it in, and this applies to electric guitars too, but you maybe want them a little bit lower. Well, you would want them a little lower than acoustics, but it works on uh, electric guitars as well as acoustic. Anyway, take a quarter, stick it in the 12th fret, right over top of the fret, and it, you can see there, I think you can see that. It should go in there okay without shoving the string up. Now, see, it's got a little bit of play there not very much you could even set it on the 11th and 12th fret I see there's it's not touching that string but it is very close now if you are able to get two quarters under there now yeah you know, I can force it under there like that but you see how shoving the string up If you can get two quarters under there without shoving the string up, you know, without that happening, see that string coming up, that's too high. You should be able to only get one quarter under your, under your strings. There, same thing on the bottom. It is so close to one quarter thickness. Now, uh, I don't know how thick a quarter is actually. About sixty-four thousandths. Well, it says sixty. There's sixty-four. That's equivalent to one about one sixteenth of an inch, or four sixty-fourths, I think. Okay. So that'll get you close. That'll get you real close into the ballpark of uh, having an instrument that will really play comfortable and easy, and not having to spend a bunch of money on tools all right checking your nut action without any way of measuring it usually a credit card I don't have a credit card here with me I got a blue chip picks card uh, it's just paper it's not even a but it's about the thickness of a credit card check your nut action like that with that you should be able to get a credit card between your string and the first fret on both sides without having to shove it under there and shove the string up you know what I mean the string shouldn't come up it should go in there just like that you can see that I think uh, same thing with uh, checking your neck relief you can't measure it if you don't have the tools but you can get very close by only using a credit card believe it or not same principles apply Put your capo on the first fret, 
uh, note the 17th fret usually, some of them it's the 15th, some of them it's the 18th, depends on where the truss rod ends. I know this truss rod ends at about the 17th fret. Take your credit card, try to go underneath a 7, 8, and 9, frets 7th, 8th, and 9th, okay? When you hold that string down at the 17th fret and you got your capo on here, there's the 9th. That might be shoving that string up a tiny bit, but, well, there it's not. But, it, you know, it's a, it just, uh, it gives you some kind of, there, you can see how easy that goes under there. It gives you some kind of idea. Now, if that shoved that string up very much at all, it is a little bit. But, uh, if it shoves it up very much, then you probably need more relief and you loosen your truss rod left to loosen right tidy left loosey right tidy something like that uh, loosen it to get more uh, relief in your your neck now people ask me about adjusting the truss rod under string tension if you are loosening your truss rod yes by all means, do it with it tuned up, you know, in standard 440 tuning. If, for whatever reason, you have to tighten that rod, I would never recommend tightening it and trying to force back bow in the neck. But you're, it's, you're working against itself with the strings pulling on it. You should loosen your strings when you tighten the, the truss and uh, have them, the strings tight when you loosen the truss. Because like I say, when you loosen it, the strings help pull that, you know, that bow or relief back into it. Uh, when you're tightening it up, you know, you're putting the back bow in it and you have the strings pulling against it. You're doing, putting extra stress on your truss rod and you can snap them and break them. I've seen it happen many times over the years. I've done it myself before. Trying to hurry, have the strings up to pitch and tighten it. Bam, it, it cracks and it's done. So uh, that's a couple of things that you can do if you don't have tools. Alrighty, people ask me about the uh, radius gauges. Let's say, this is a sheet of paper here, it's, it's all folded up and got crap wrote on it, but um, they make a tool and I don't, I can't think what it's called, I keep wanting to call it a, a protractor but that's not what it's called I think it's called a locking compass maybe but it's got a pointed end on one end and a pencil in the end, other end of it and you can adjust it in and out to make a bigger circle it just draws a circle circumference of a circle but uh, those things that I use uh, to measure the radius of a fretboard you can make your own and say if you want to make a 12, a 12 inch radius gauge okay you take one of those uh, locking compasses I think, I hope that's what they're called, I can't remember I can't think of it anyways, got a sheet of paper here, put the point in the center of the paper measure out here 12 inches and then keep that center measure out 12 inches and then draw a circle completely around the center of the point Okay, you just drawed a 12 inch radius. You can cut that out with scissors. You can check your uh, radius of your fretboard with it. Cut it out accurate. You've got to be accurate with the scissors for that to work right. But it works. I used to do it. I've done it before. Uh, say if you want a, uh, I always say it's a, a 9 inch radius, okay? Put your uh, tool in the center of the paper. Measure out 9 inches. And then keep that center point down and, and draw a circle around the center point and the circle is the nine inch radius that you're going to have when you cut it out then you can lay that again a fretboard that's got a nine inch radius it'll fit like a glove baby uh, so that's another idea you can do to uh, make your own tools you know, so to speak now a hammer is a good thing to have around a lot of times if you have fret buzz okay if you look at the frets very close, the sides and along, you know, these sides of them, 
sometimes you can see one of them popped up a little bit. Take that hammer, take the strings off, of course, and just tap on it. You know, don't beat the shit out of it. Just tap on it lightly and watch it and see if it goes back down in, in place or not. That solves a lot of fretboard problems. Uh, if you have a short, a very short straight edge, or if you have a straight edge, cut it off and make it short, and I'll show you what you can do with it. Hold on. This is a fret rocker from the neck check guitar guys, okay? This, uh, you can find high frets with this. It's got four different sides of different lengths. Let me get in the camera here. One, two, three, four. And the reason for it being longer and shorter is so you can get across three frets at a time. Now, of course, when you get down here where the frets are closer, you're going to have to use a shorter part of it. Anyways, you can take a cheap uh, straight edge, cut it, cut one piece of it about four inches long. Well, I'll tell you what we can do here. I'll even help you out more. Yeah, I, it's a good guess. Cut one straight edge piece four inches long, okay? Cut another one an inch and three quarters long. Cut one more two inches long. And the fourth one three inches long, okay? That you will have four tiny straight edges of different lengths. You can use that as a fret rocker if you don't have a fret rocker. And I'm talking about these little cheap straight edges like this. You know, you can buy these all day long. It's aluminum. Uh, but they're flat. They're straight. And I could cut four of these, you know, four pieces out. All four of those different lengths. And it would serve as the exact same purpose as the fret rocker does. And like I say, you just come down the neck. Oh, I'll have to use a shorter one here. Put the, uh, the straight edge on three frets. Try to rock it back and forth. Check between every string. Hopefully we don't find any rocks on this guitar. And then, like I said, when you get down here, the frets are closer. Use the one you made that is short. Check between every string. Don't just check in one place. And if you have a high fret or a high spot, and you might take your hammer and peck it a little bit, you know, kind of pop it back down. Make sure you're hammering the one that's high, though. Just don't start banging on your guitar, guessing at which frets might be high or low. Use what I just told you. If you don't have one of these, it works perfect, man. It works as good as one of these. It's a little, you know, not as compact, but it still gets the job done. Okay, what else? Um, I think that's about it. Let me set the camera there back. again. This is what it looks like falling from the sky. I think you can see that. And it's coming down pretty good. We've got about four inches on the ground right now. Um, anyways, for those of you that never see this, be very grateful. Because it piles up. It's not too bad right now, but it could get bad bad from the looks of it. I like I say, that's just uh, things that you can do to get by, you know, if you don't have the proper tools and uh, you don't want to sink a small fortune into them because it takes a lot of tools, guys, I'm telling you. Unless you have more than four or five guitars, you know, I wouldn't spend that much money on the, the good tools. Unless I had at least four guitars that I wanted to keep up. Uh, some other things I wanted to mention. I forget. Yeah, I get so many messages, man, on Facebook and even in YouTube comments and stuff. And I forget names. So I'm sorry, man. I forget your name. Oh, there was a couple or three of you asking me. We were talking about the Crimson's, uh, Crimson Guitars uh, Nut Filing Kit. Okay? And I asked Ben about that from Crimson Guitars, and he said that they discontinued that because it was costing them so much to make the thing. And uh, 
they, it was taking them a long time to make them, and so they discontinued. He was losing money on it. They replaced it with single nut slot files. You can't get the kit anymore unless he happens to have one laying around. That was so sweet of a tool, man. I wish I would have bought one myself rather than pay Stumac 50 bucks up per file or whatever. It was way too much. Not even going to get started on Stumac. Still got something in my eye. Anyways, I wanted to tell whoever you guys were that we were talking about that. Uh, it's discontinued. Crimson makes it no more. Ben said that they just, uh, you know, was losing too much money and it's taking too long to make the things. All right. Quick clips. I wanted to get another series of that started in January, and here we are almost in March now. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If I left anything out here, it's simple ways that you can fix your guitar without, you know, a lot of tools. Put in the comments down below what... Uh, Anything that you can add to this, it'll help a lot of people, I'm sure. Uh, the quick clips. Put in the comments below, if you were around when I did that, if you want those. You know, I'm having a really hard time getting around to making them. I'm out of practice, haven't been playing the guitar, I've been letting my hands rest. Yeah, I got notes, man, I can't remember shit. But I've been getting my hands a good long rest, and it's really helping, I can tell. But I'm out of practice, bad, as you've seen on the, uh, le uh, the uh, Epiphone guitar. I couldn't even already play it. I couldn't feel the strings was too light. But if you guys want that Quick Clips uh, series to continue, just say so. I don't know when, but I will get around to it. Uh, I just need to know if it's important to you or not. Someone asked me to do an updated version of Tony Rice's version of Church Street Blues. I'm going to do that. Like I say, i got to get back in practice again, but I will just hang on because I will get to it. Um, I think that's it, guys. Uh, like I say, if you want the quick clips to continue, if you want me to do another series of that, or just forget that and throw in a guitar lesson now and then, or a few licks or something now and then, whatever you people want, I want to do what you guys want me to do. That's the that's what I'm driving at. Uh, I keep the subscribers happy. So let me know if you want quick clips, yes or no. Um, and if you can think of anything, I know there's stuff I'm leaving out, like this paper thing back here where you stick a piece of paper under the bridge to see if it's pulled up. That's another little tip trick that you can do to your guitar. If it is pulled up. There's no quick fix for that. It, it's got to come off and be done right. But yeah, put in the comments if I've left anything out you all can think of. Uh, you little things that you can do without so many tools and so much money spent on tools. And also put in there about the quick clips. If you want those, I'll get in practice as soon as I can and get them started again. If not, that's cool too. It makes my job easier. So cheers to y'all. Thanks. I hope this little bit of info helps somebody. It's not the way to fix your guitar, but it is the way <clears throat> if you don't have all the proper tools and it costs some big bucks to buy everything you need, you know, and have it on hand. I understand clearly why no one would want to do that unless they were going to work on guitars, you know, a lot of guitars all the time. But put in the comments if you can think of anything. I can't think of anything else right now. If you can think of anything, put in the comments that I've left out. And it'll help, uh, I'm sure, anybody that reads it. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on another installment of The House That Never Sleeps Soon. Cheers to you. Are you afraid? Tell the YouTube friends, I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, it's going to get wild. I love you.